Today I'm going to talk about how to balance training intensity and volume. Periodization or the organization of your workouts in powerlifting training is often underappreciated or worse, completely butchered. On one hand, we can find lifters running the same monotonous seam of reps and sets for months on end with no credence to the principles of progressive overload, wondering why they aren't making any progress. On the other hand, we have lifters who redline every single workout, making out at an RP20 for each and every set that they do. Also wondering why they're hitting a plateau in their performance. Finding a harmonious balance between training intensity, how heavy you're lifting, and volume, how much work we're doing, quantified by total reps, sets, and load is the key to making continuous progress while minimizing risk of overtraining and injury. This balance is also crucial to ensure that the lifter is as prepared as possible for competition day. The ideal combination of volume and intensity will shift over the course of a training macro cycle to mitigate fatigue as much as possible. Fitness and fatigue tend to be inversely related. So if our goal is to optimize performance and progress, excessive fatigue is our enemy. This is why the athlete who frequently exceeds his or her own capacity for training volume and intensity won't succeed in the long run. So more is not always better. Believe me, because I had to learn that, the tough one. Yes, it feels great to push past barriers in training, and this can be done strategically, but what matters most is that you execute just enough volume to drive the desired adaptation without impeding upon your performance in future sessions. This target is known as your maximal or maximum recoverable volume or MRV. At the other end of the spectrum, there's athletes who are well below this capacity and unable to provide a strong enough stimulus to, a stimul to stimulate muscle growth and strength. This athlete may need a boost in volume to achieve the appropriate loading dosage. This concept is known as your minimum effective volume or MEV. The threshold of work that must be reached in training to make steady measurable improvements. Research has shown that anywhere from five to 20 sets per week can be enough to drive strength and hypertrophy gains. But that's a pretty large range. Moreover, high volume is relative and individual to each athlete. A high amount of volume for one person may be well below another athlete's MEV. So instead of defining yourself an arbitrary number of sets to break through a training plateau, try boosting your current volume by 20% for eight to 12 weeks and then reassessing from there. Now, Back to how volume and intensity will ideally intermingle with a periodized training program. During the accumulation phase, volume is high and intensity is moderate. This four to six week phase is when the lifter sees the greatest gains in work capacity, scale acquisition, and hypertrophy. Next comes the intensification phase, which is when, you guessed it, intensity increases while the number of sets slightly decreases during this three to six weeks, overall work done is set to increase during this phase. Fatigue is high, but things really start to come together in terms of noticeable progress. As the competition approaches, volume will be tapered back even more during the one to two weeks of the peaking phase. This is to prevent unwanted fatigue, fatigue accumulation, which could be detrimental to an athlete's performance during midday. During this time, intensity stays high to provide adequate stimulus for maximal force production. But performing fewer sets helps mitigate the risk of excessive tissue damage and subsequent inflammation that can be associated with high volume training. If you follow the program and everything goes as anticipated, which I might add, it rarely ever does, so be ready for hiccups. You will be perfectly peaked for your testing day and as prepared as possible to take that barbell for a ride. Volume and intensity play a cute uh, game of cat and mouse during the training program and that's just to be expected. So I hope this video helped clarify 
at least the rationale behind training periodization. As always, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the support. If you have any questions, drop them down below or, or reach out to me on any of my social media channels and I'll try to get back to you. As always, thank you guys and I'll see you guys on the next video.